in many ways this platform as we've been saying is a festival of kinship it is also about mothers and daughters fathers and daughters too but especially about mothers and daughters and all day today you will see many mothers and daughters on our stage well we are about to introduce a pair that is truly truly charming accomplished authentic grounded real and real and themselves despite living pretty much all the time in the public gaze we're talking about shweta bachan and her daughter navya nanda shweta of course is a novelist a columnist and designed her own fashion label and her daughter navya is an entrepreneur with a special focus on women's issues everything from entrepreneurial to project ara let's welcome our first mother daughter duo to we the women it is an absolute delight uh, if we can bring them up now and there they are uh, in one frame but are they always on the same page hi we're going to find out thank you uh, for your time and let me start with you shweta there's a sense that mothers have and women in general have that sometimes what we couldn't do we want our daughters to do sometimes what we fought our mothers on we want you know restrict our daughters in the same way but we find as we grow older that we all become our mothers we all become the women we thought we wouldn't become you know it it's it's so odd like i feel that today as i as i turn 50 do you find that you were you are a very different parent to navya than your parents and in particular your your mom jaya ji was to you um hi barka thank you for having navya and me on this platform with some very accomplished ladies um it's a huge privilege to answer your question yes but i also think it's a generational thing you know there's certain um everything evolves parenting evolves exposure evolves my mother was a self-made woman came from a uh, bhopal which is a small town in india and you know she came from a family of three daughters her father was a journalist he's also an author he's written several books on the female dacoits um of india so he was a very uh, he empowered my mother um and my masis um to sort of you know be a lot more maybe navya help me with this um independent independent um and achievement oriented than maybe a woman at that time would be mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. yes that's also shaped how my mother brought me up which then shaped how i guess i brought navya up so yeah there is there is there is a difference but i wouldn't say it's a gaping difference and in some ways i think you're suggesting that that difference is also how generations shift our ideas about uh, you know what is kosher and what is not what should be permitted and not also evolves obviously right yes um i you know my mother also you know um her emphasis will also be sometimes on things like how are they sitting how messy this these are not my emphasis my emphasis is are they productive are they good people are they are respectful yes navya she... <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm navya, sure navya, navya, navya navya you you almost sound like you're not sure what your mom really thinks sure. about you no no i i just said to her i'm on the show riding on your coat tail so of course i think you're productive ah. and there's a ah. there's a basic like i think you know with my mother there was this this all this mindset that yes we're proud of our daughters we're proud of our sons but we don't we don't say it that's wrong and i feel that i i i should tell my children how proud i am and how happy i am with what they achieve every single day they should know that even the smallest things they do make me happy make me proud they don't have to you know be world leaders for me to say well done but you know even a small kindness is enough and i feel a lot of indian parents need to start doing that barka if you if i don't my if you don't mind my saying because i feel they don't appreciate their children enough they do but they don't express it and i think that is very very important well i think you and i shweta come from a generation where our parents were not necessarily very demonstrative with emotion and that was in a way 
how they thought parenting maybe ought to be. And as you said, it's changed a lot. But you said, you know, you, yes. your children don't have to be world leaders uh, for you to be proud of them. But the way your daughter uh, is going, she really does have the world's attention. Uh, you know, I was on a program moderating her with Indra Nui and she completely held her own. And I don't want to talk about her in third person while she's right there. So Navya, my question to you is this. You could have, you know, been an actor. You might still run uh, your father's company. But you have chosen instead to focus on women, whether it is looking at women and health, whether it is looking at uh, subjects of reproductive rights, um, you know, removing and questioning the stigma around issues like menstruation or focusing on uh, female entrepreneurship. Why? When did this happen for you? When did this become something you cared so much about? Obviously, you come from a family a background of incredibly strong women. But even so, do you remember that time when you said, OK, this is what really moves my world? Well, thank you for having us here today and especially with mom. It's always nice to be anywhere with her and talking about um, you know, something that I'm very passionate about. But to answer your question, I can't remember any specific moment that shaped, um, you know, the reason why I wanted to do it. But I think I always knew I wanted to do something of my own. Um, I think the feeling of having accomplished, you know, a startup and, you know, these small achievements, um, you know, they're small to the world, but they're, they're big for me because it's something I've done entirely on my own. And I think that feeling is something, um, you know, that I wouldn't be able to describe and um <laughs> this picture of me <laughs> but um i think you uh, like it or you me, don't I, like it you like the I picture like or you it. don't like it okay good <laughs> I, I do, I do. <laughs> but um i think for me i always wanted to focus on gender i've had opportunities um and you know the privilege to do a lot of things that i'm very grateful for and you know having the opportunity to study abroad and see the world um you know something that i've you know that I take that experience and I want to, you know, use it in a positive way. I'm also aware of, you know, where we come from and the kind of eyeballs we have. And I always believe that, you know, with privilege comes responsibility. And I want to use the platform that I've been given uh, to bring to light issues that may not have been given the kind of emphasis that they should have in the past. And I think uh, especially that at this point of time, I work with so many incredible, incredible young people who are doing such great work. And I really want to be a part of, you know, this future that we talk about. We Everyone talks about it, but what are we actively doing to achieve that? And I really want to uh, be someone who can be a part of it and create this world that I think we should live in where, you know, women get equal opportunities, where they get access. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I think that's why I decided to, you know, do that and take it upon myself to make that happen. So before my next question, I feel like your mom wants to come in with a thought. Shweta, go ahead. I was breathe. just, I said, breathe. <laughs> Navya gets so okay. involved in what she's doing and then she just goes off and she doesn't breathe. So I just said, breathe. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we all hyperventilate at different points in our life. And well, some of us do, at least I do. I know I do. Navya, you know, you spoke about the privilege you come, you, you come from. And of course, all of us uh, come from varying degrees of, of privilege. And I'm glad you flagged that, which is why we really try to get a multitude of different voices on this platform. But here's my question. I remember the last time you and I were speaking and Indra Nui was on, on, uh, on our panel, you you told me later that you, you, you felt really good that I did not, in fact, introduce you as you normally are introduced as Amitabh Bachchan's granddaughter. And I want to know from you, obviously, you love your family, but being in that gaze and always being tailed to your famous last name, how have you, and I'm actually going to ask your mom the same question, how have both of you found that space to be yourselves with constant public scrutiny on you for your famous last name and then everything else that follows including the clothes you wear what the lighting is like on an instagram post and so on how do you find that space to breathe and be yourself i'll start with you navya um i think it's not something that i mean i speak for myself i've ever been ashamed of i think it's no why um, should you be you ashamed know, of it you should be proud of it but at the no. same time I guess what I'm saying is I can see that both of you want to be your own Bachans or your own uh, Nandas. You know, you want to just be yourselves. I think being aware of it, being um, aware of the responsibility that that name comes with 
and uh, also being responsible for carrying that legacy forward. We have a great legacy that doesn't just, you know, go up till my grandfather, but my great grandparents from both sides of the family. I think it's um, uh, being aware of the fact that we as the fourth generation, for me, um, are responsible to carry that name forward and that legacy forward and not just um, through the work that we do, but through the respect that we earn, through the impact that we make in everyone's lives. And I think it's about finding, um, you know, a way that we can do that best with something that we're good at doing. For her, it would be, you know, the work that she does. But for me, I think it would be, um, you know, helping women and doing whatever I can, um, using the opportunities and the resources that I have um, to my advantage. So it's about using the perks of that and how can I use everything that I have um, and give it to others and help, you know, do the best that I can with it. Well said. And you know, Shweta, you said in the beginning that you're here on the coattails of your daughter, not to take anything away from Navya. We love you, Navya. But your mom was a speaker by herself at We The Women earlier when her book was just out, Paradise Stars. So uh, it's the same question to you. You know, uh, obviously, you're extremely proud of your family, uh, but you're not necessarily in public life in the same way. So does that get like strange for you, Shweta, because you want to be yourself, but you're constantly being microscopically, you know, followed, uh, reported on every move of yours, every photograph of yours is, uh, is kind of followed. And you're, I mean, I know because we trade notes on it sometimes on Instagram, you, you're, you're like lost in the world of books, you write yourself, uh, you're a designer, you have many different passions. How do you carve out that space that is just yours, Shweta? Um, Barka, I actually think that's a default because of being, you know, in the public eye. And uh, I, I think when I'm, my, I, I guard my personal life very um, dearly and, and I prefer to be retiring and you know be in my own world and crocheting and reading and with my children and with my family and i think that's my way of dealing with it i'm a very shy person by nature and all this is very daunting for me so i prefer not to be out there what i like about navya is and i wish i you know had the the brains or the gumption to do this is she's taken her privilege She's taken a platform that was, you know, that came to her and she's turned it into something that, you know, highlights issues and, and women's issues and education. And, and I think it, she's made it into something so positive. So, yes, I mean, you, she did go through that phase where, you know, there were pictures of her that would come in, in news clippings or if she's in a, you know, a swimsuit or what have you. And there was always, I mean, there's, there's been that and she went through that and it's a rite of passage and it's fine. Um, but I love what she's done with what she has been handed. I mean, we were just listening to the speakers before us and I mean, it's incredible that, you know, yeah. we take these things so lightly and here they haven't been allowed to open a computer and here the kids are like, oh, my computer's not working and I need to this. and. And it's just something, it's just, you know, it's taken so, it, there's no importance given to it. And here this lady is struggling to even be able to touch a computer. It just really reinforces how very, very fortunate we are. And I say that to my children all the time is we are so, so fortunate. Even when we have our issues or our troubles, it's never as bad as, you know, it is for millions of women out there. So yeah. <sighs> You know, Navya, uh, because we're here to talk about feminism, freedom and the female voice. And I'm glad Shweta spoke about those incredible women from Khabar Leheria who had to fight, as she said, to use a phone, to touch a phone, to touch a computer. Um, let's talk about some of the issues uh, that you're working on, but that also confront you every day. And on your Instagram post once, somebody asked what your mother does, what work does Shweta do? And you had a pretty passionate response to that right and it, it it goes to the heart of the fact that today there's a global debate uh, around the fact that women are constantly doing work for which they are not officially paid i'm not obviously talking about shweta but i'm talking about you know women who are homemakers in general because you had a long post on it so i want to bring you in on your thoughts on this and what you felt when you were asked that question 
So I think it was in response to um, this particular comment, I think was in response to an interview I'd given where I spoke about how, um, you know, she was an inspiration to me and how I get a lot of motivation from, you know, my mother and somebody responded saying, but what does she do? And I responded to that saying that she's a wife, she's a mother and she's a daughter. And the thought behind that, you know, really comes from the fact that we as a society don't appreciate the role that a mother plays and the kind of effort, time and work that goes into being a mom. And I think we need to start appreciating that. And, you know, I see, you know, as maybe earlier on in our lives, we wouldn't have taken it that seriously. But as I grow older and I see the kind of time that, you know, goes into just running a house or making sure that, you know, we are on track or being there for, you know, talks and for events that, you know, are important to us. I think there's a lot that goes into that. And I think that as a society, um, you know, we need to start appreciating that. And that thought kind of also came from the fact that we talk about, you know, women empowerment and we encourage women to be, you know, whatever they want to be, but we yet criticize them for being homemakers or for just being, people say, oh, you're just a homemaker. But that's her own choice. And I think that is empowerment, is making your own decision. And, and for us as a society, supporting that is, you know, how we can highlight women empowerment. So that was kind of the thought behind that response to that, mm -hmm. you know, comment. Yeah. Game. I, and I mean, I mean, to my eye, Shweta does a million things. And, and, and the question was banal and, 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 and stupid. But I found your response uh, something intriguing. And I thought we should talk about it. Uh, you. You were also, I think you, I want to ask before I come to the next question, what are the kind of things you all argue about? And I don't just mean, hey, Navya, you're untidy and you haven't cleaned your room. I mean, I don't know if she is untidy, but I mean, like, issues. Are the issues that you disagree on, Shweta? I mean, every generation has a different way of looking at the same issue. Uh, for example, I find our generation looks at this whole work life balance debate in a completely different way from millennials, a completely different way from Gen Z's. So as mothers and daughters, as a mother and daughter, what do you disagree on most vociferously? Shweta? Um, I, you know, with Navya, I, I try to tell her that you're, you're young, you have a long way to go, and Navya wants to do everything. So she doesn't say no to anything. And then, you know, then she'll say, I'm just so burnt out, mom, I don't, and she's at it from morning to night. And I just feel, take it slow, take it easier. But as far as things, real issues are concerned, you know, whether it's women's rights, whether it's education for women, the work she's doing, I think I'm on the same page as her. We more, our, our fights are more about uh, <laughs> keep your room clean and <laughs> don't be so. I got that right. I got that one right. Balance is the first thing that we disagree on a but lot. not the work I'm, I, I the I fact that I take on too much but for me the logic behind it is that I'm young and I want to do as much as I can to catch up to all the work that's been done and I might fall while doing it but at least I'll reach five minutes early you know and I'll get that extra work in or that extra project in so for me it's important to just do everything <laughs> You know, Navya, uh, I mean, I know because we chatted about this before um, before we started this uh, conversation, uh, the newspapers quoted you as saying that even your home was, uh, you know, displayed some subliminal sexism because when guests came over, it was you as a girl who had to get up and organize and look after and your brother didn't. And you told me at the time that that's not what you said. So I just want to ask you, uh, you know, what actually happens when guests come over? No, so that, I, I'll do I do everything and the kids just sit there and, that's and look, not true. And look yeah. it's, it's and, and we had a big argument with her, Navya and August, uh, Augustia and myself. That's my son and me, because I, we said, how could you do the, How could you say this about us? This is it not, was our not in the context that I said it in. But um, she's been, you know, someone who's been very fair with the both of us, you know, if I have been told to do something, she will make sure that my brother Augustia is also doing the same thing. It's never that she would, you know, leave either of us. In terms out. of home, but I feel definitely that I have, I mean, my mother tells me that you're way harder on Navya than you are on Augustia. That's true. I would really? 100%. And I, I, why I, is that you think? Why, why is that you think, Shweta? 
I think because I don't know, but I also feel that it's because it's way tougher for women, and especially for women in India, it's way tougher, and they have to be made of stronger stuff, and to deal with things that come on. So you, you, I think as a as a mother, it's a protective instinct. I have to make you strong enough to face the battles you're going to have to face, whether it's uh, you know whether you want to marry when you're in your thirties, which is a big no no in india or whether you want to not marry or whether you what whatever it is these societal things it's 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 going to be tough and you have to be made of stronger stuff and especially if you're going to be you know looked at as someone's granddaughter someone's daughter someone's gra you know great granddaughter just toughen up because it's your you know your brother will get away with everything because he's a boy and no one really you know is going to talk about the morality of a boy they seem mm -hmm. to get away with everything. But for a girl, it's different. I've never had separate rules for my children with, you know, in terms of they want boyfriends, girlfriends. It's always been the same for me. Um, but I just want Navya to be strong because I think she's going to have to face a lot more than Agastya will in terms of yeah. societal expectations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, that protective instinct sometimes manifests in different ways. There are families that, that, that are so protective of their daughters that they never set them free. They never give them wings. And instead of toughening them up, they actually make them more fragile because that protective instinct takes over. You say you don't have different rules uh, in terms of raising a son and a daughter, except for wanting your daughter to be tougher because that's the real world. But do you find that you're able to give or set Navya free? because the world is also a more hostile place for women, in particular young women, or does your sort of instinct to cosette and protect and guard take over at that time? Both my children are homing pigeons. I, I, I keep yeah. saying, go out. I keep wanting to push them out into the world and say, come on, come on, go out. And then they, they want to come back and they want to, you know, just be home and in the nest and then they're happy and they want to be around wherever I am. And I, I'm constantly telling them that, go travel see the world meet people just put yourself out there i hope they listen i yeah we, we, we try to do that and i think you she's never also stopped us from having an experience whether that would be a positive one or a negative one because i think both of those will just shape us into being who we are so i think i've never felt that she's stopped me from you know, doing something that could either harm me or could benefit me. It's about having that experience overall. So what do you argue about Navya? I mean, your mom says it's mostly, it's not on issues. It's more about like, you know, daily hygiene. Like, have you, have you cleaned up after you? Is your room tidy? But do you find that you represent, obviously, so do you find you represent a different way of thinking? that when both of you talk about what feminism is or what freedom is, you don't necessarily see it the same way. And that's fine. That can happen even within the same generation. But, you know, what are some of the minefields that you have to navigate carefully when it comes to, to your mom? And do you agree that she's much tougher on you than she's on your brother? Yes, I 100% agree that she's a lot, lot tougher on me. But um, no, I don't think we disagree on anything or we have different ways of thinking. It's actually... Um, I would say it's actually great that me, my mom and my nani, actually, we all three think in the same way. So even when we're sitting in the evening and talking about issues, um, you know, maybe the information source that we're coming with is different. Like my mom, you know, the way we get our information is different, but the ideas and the opinions are always the same. And I think that's probably why um, I have this way of thinking is because she's come from that school of thought and she's come from that school of thought because my nani has so it's actually great that you know we have three generations of different women um who've lived life at different points but all think the same way about you know feminism or women um and i think that's great i actually think that's um it's great because i don't have to explain you know Nabia, i think you're a lot more impatient and you're a lot more Am frustrated <laughs> about like the situation of you know of, of how things are and and maybe my mother is very angry about it <laughs> uh, hers is a different reaction and i think i'm somewhere in the middle where yes it angers me enough that i feel more has to be done but i also understand that you know we are just about beginning as, as a country as a society we're just about beginning to even discuss these issues 
and it takes time change takes time navya's navya's attitude is it should be happening today and <laughs> this and you know there's a lot of angst and frustration which i guess goes far for the course with her age and her yeah. stage in life but and my mother's also very angry and volatile about things and i feel i'm somewhere in the middle sort of yeah, like yeah. as it takes time it it takes time it starts actually i feel where it starts from is from the home where the mother's voice or the matriarch's voice is heard not just on issues of aaj khane mein kya banna hai but also wider issues politics um society um you know different things where my mother's voice was always taken into account um and i think yeah. it also comes from one who's worked who's made her own money who's brought her own heft to the table i haven't done that but because i'm so used to my mother my grandmother my dadi who i lived with they all had a voice whether it be about something they've read in the newspaper or a news item or you know whether they think you should take this business decision or not these are things they've always been involved in and i think in homes if you start involving women in these minor decision making things and you know i i think it then you will your daughters see that you have a voice and then they grow to have a voice. and i think that's how it yeah. you don't have to be standing with a banner or a flag or placards it just comes from involved women who actually i feel have very strong um, you know i they have a very uh, their strength is that they're able to understand also better their their eq is better therefore they can make decisions or inform you on decisions that maybe a man will not think about and at least in my house i have seen my grandfather my dada ji behave like this my father has behaved like this we they've always asked the women what they they feel whether it's a, a movie or whether it's a business decision or whether whatever it is and i feel if you involve and you hear the voice of of the women in your house i think then you grow up to have a voice of your own and you don't have to teach it it's just absorb like osmosis it's just absorb you know um, i just uh, want to go back to some pictures we were playing because i remembered on your instagram feed shweta there was this incredible photograph and you just had one word below it and you said matriarchy and i think that is really what you're talking about the role of uh, of of women it doesn't have to be stated necessarily uh, that you come from a home where women have always been opinionated they've not had to necessarily fight to emerge from uh, from some shadows what does this idea of matriarchy mean to you in an essentially patriarchal culture where literally fighting patriarchy is a lifelong sort of battle for all of us what is me i feel as women we need to band together that was a picture of my nani my masis and my mom and and i feel it it's the essence of what i am today is i am the sum total of all the women in my life because you take bits from their lives and you know where and they're all women who've worked um they mm-hmm. all women who are independent and uh, i think that's the way forward that's what it means to support each other a lot of women don't support each other you know it's very easy to start saying oh she's this and she's that and look into your own homes and support the women like a lot of a lot of mothers will not support their daughters they should you know because the sons will anyway get support the world is there to make it easy for them you have to be there to um stand up for your daughter like i am sacrificing my sunday morning for now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully it's not all all torture yeah. and you're you're enjoying it uh no, but no, navya navya involved in the as a fourth generation in the family business my 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 son has chosen another path which we support and navya has chosen to sort of you know get into the into the family business which is a hardcore engineering manufacturing business and i'm so proud of her for it and she's learning from bottom up you know she goes to the factory and she's starting as a intern and she's owning her own earning her own money and and i support her for that okay oh, yeah so I was going to ask you exactly about that Navya that you know there's a sense of uh, what is loosely uh, and lazily called uh, star kids or or filmy kids uh, you know the expectation 
probably by sort of paparazzi journalists was that you would inevitably also become an actor. You've chosen a very different line, as your mom just described. And actually, businesses, traditional businesses uh, in India continue to be, in a sense, passed down to the sun if there's a sun. Typically, I'm not saying there aren't exceptions, but typically that's what happens, right? How did you uh, or why did you or what made you want to come into this uh, into this space, into the space of your family business? Did you ever consider flirting with, with, with cinema or was it never of any interest to you? I think not. I mean, everyone, I enjoy, you know, dancing and things like that, but it was never something I took you know, seriously that I would do this as a career path or choose this as, you know, my career. And I was always more inclined towards, I think, business. And even growing up, um, you know, when I talk about my father's side of the family, my uh, dadi and my bua are both working women. They both, I've seen them work from when I was very, very young. And the same thing that, you know, mom talked about, they both also, you know, were involved in the family business in, in in some capacity because they would talk about issues and they would you know my my father my grandfather would take their opinion on it and i think that was always a world that excited me a lot more and um, obviously i also am the fourth generation of um, you know the nandas to take over that and i think i really wanted to carry that legacy forward as well and um, you know really support my dad in everything that he's doing um, also, being a woman in the family to kind of take that forward was also something of great pride to me. And I wanted to, um, you know, do it definitely, um, having seen my dadi and my bua do it so, so well for so long. Um, but no, I don't think acting or, you know, that was ever something that I would have done as a career for sure. You I did have a brief point where you thought, I thought maybe at the end. But then I think after I went to college and um, you know, the world just opened up for me, I realized that there's so much more that I wanted to do and this was definitely not it. And Shweta, what would you have felt had she wanted to, you know, you're, you're reminding us that she had a brief moment. If she had wanted to be an actor, uh, would you have said, yeah, sure, go ahead? I, I would be apprehensive for both my children, son or daughter. So, you know, there's always a sense of apprehension, but... Uh, because? Yeah, at the end of the, day, the end of the day, I just I just feel, oh, uh, it's it's difficult. It's not an easy. You talk about privilege, and we come from a great amount of privilege, and we have you know you talk about being under the microscope, and that we are. But never for a day do I forget because I I see my father every single day, and he's seventy nine. He'll be eighty this year, and he works so hard for that privilege that we enjoy and i can never forget that so i know what goes behind everything you see here you know everything it comes from just one man waking up and it's sheer willpower waking up every morning at five in the morning and starting his day and being at it and try being on a set it's not easy so these are, I mean, it's a, it's a tough world and you put a lot of effort into it and things, you know, you may have a movie that comes out and it, and it doesn't do well. It's mm. heartbreaking to deal with that. And then, you know, then you have people saying, you know, pick, picking at every single thing you do, whether it's professional, personal, what have you. It's a very, very tough life. It's not an easy life. It's not an easy path to take. And it's a very public life. It's just, you know, sort of, but Navya is trading a fishbowl for an aquarium or for Agastya. Yeah. So you should have to know that yeah. before you get into something like this. So that is my apprehension as a mother. It's a again, it's a protective instinct. But if this is something they want to do, sure. I mean, I would support them. I mean, I don't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Navya, you don't, you clearly don't want to do that anymore, right? No, definitely not. <laughs> Okay. I love this line that it would have been a trade a fishbowl for an aquarium. I would say trade a fishbowl for the ocean. But maybe, you know, that sense of the ocean never comes because, as you said, you're always under the microscope. And that takes me to yeah, a very... In, in, like, as in people look at you, you're just I in know. this aquarium. <laughs> I get it. I get Sorry. it. So either way, you're looked at and it's either the fishbowl or the aquarium. And I, I, I hear you. Uh, here's an interesting question to which there is no easy answer. Uh, 
you know, Navya, you're the Instagram uh, sort of a product of the Instagram generation. And Instagram is full of filters and ways to make us feel better about ourselves. But sometimes we, and especially young girls, and study after study shows this, end up feeling worse about ourselves because everybody else seems to look better, thinner, happier. Uh, and, and it goes right to the debate uh, around objectification of women, uh, whose gaze is defining us, even when we say it's our choice, how do we ignore the cues of mass culture, the pressure on us to be a certain body size, to have a certain color of skin, to dress a certain way. Have you gone through that struggle? And as a young feminist, how do you navigate that? What would you say to, you know, young women your age? I mean, she would actually be able to answer this better for me. But yeah, I think I did go through a brief period when I was in school where I wanted to, you know, fit in. And the way that I would dress or the way that I would, you know, pose for pictures wasn't me and I, I I suppose I was doing it because that's what I was seeing and that's what was supposed to be cool and that's what the other girls were doing and um, I wanted to be a part of that and I think I did even go through a lot of you know self-esteem issues and not feeling confident about myself and um, something that gives me a lot of confidence now today is is my work and the platform that I have um, so recently, I mean, ever since I started working, I've tried to use that in a manner that's true to myself. So even my Instagram, um, you know, what I use it for is not, I would say, typically what it's used for, because, you know, I don't overshare a lot of my life or a lot of myself. Uh, but I try to put out a lot more about my work and issues that I'm, you know, fighting for or talking about. Um, and I think that gives me confidence. I no longer feel like I want to fit in. Um, or do what everybody else is doing. I want to bring something fresh, something new, um, use the platform for something that it might not have been used for before. Um, because I think that there's so many people today, especially young people who are on Instagram. And like you said, um, you know, there is so much of, you know, the filters and, and the glamour mm -hmm. that we see. That, um, you know, I really want people to also use it to educate themselves, to be more aware. And if I can use my platform to do that, then I think that's what gives me a lot of confidence today. I mean, thank you for saying that because I, I keep telling every young woman I encounter that nothing will make you feel better about yourself than the central passion of your life, whatever that is. I mean, it can be writing a book, it can be, uh, you know, cooking a great meal, it can be whatever it is, but your self-esteem, I think in the end, all of us, you know, it comes from what we love to do. But Shweta, as a mom, you know, like you said, it's a rite of passage, and I agree with you. But then again, we live in this very different culture, this, the, this generation, Navya's generation. Uh, there's almost a sort of danger of the virtual being treated as a real. People almost forget what they actually look like when the filters are off, uh, when you're not in good light, when you don't have the right makeup on. How do you give your children a sense of confidence that it's it's okay, whatever it is, whatever the size of your body, as long as you're healthy, whatever you look like. I mean, that's such an important conversation for young girls everywhere. I agree with you. And it's more and more pressing today. There's so many young girls with such self-esteem issues and they suffer crippling anxiety. And I think a simple answer of a parent is to say, life isn't perfect, you know. Um, young girls like Navya, Will, who have a lot of eyeballs on them, they are not perfect. Navya will have a skin rash and, you know, and then she'll say, mom, what do I do about it? Her life is not perfect. There are things that bother her. Nobody is perfect. And you have, it's, it's that. Let's start celebrating those things. You know, these are the things that make you, you. And it's important to have something that you, that anchors you, that makes you feel good about yourself. So if it's, um, and it shouldn't just be about the physical. Mm -hmm. It has to be something beyond that. You know, you have to have passions that are just beyond how, how you're looking on a little screen. And I think maybe taking some time out from this obsessive scrolling, I know it's easier said than done. Even me, I'm unable to control it. Because a lot yeah. of us, you know, you're waiting in a waiting room, chalo, okay, you look through Instagram. But I think also a lot has to be pushed out that this is not everybody's real life. Everyone's tweaking and everyone's filtering. And, and I think a lot of kids know that today. And um, as parents, we have to be there with our good old fashioned 80s and 90s um, sort of <laughs> ethic and say, 
you know, get on with it. This is not real life. And and I think no one knows better how to have navigate social media and what comes with it than this lot. Because, I mean, if I when I get trolled or if I get a nasty comment, I'm in shambles. And they, for them, it's yeah, what it's not a big deal. So I think also they learn not to take it so seriously. So they should apply the same logic to, um, you know, body confidence and um, looks. I mean, yeah, nobody looks as great as they look on Instagram. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, Navya, I, I, I agree with your mom that like trolling, uh, many of you have a thick skin about, some of us have acquired it, but body confidence, you know, it, it is actually a real issue. And this is not, you know, one would say this is an elite concern, but no, this, this notion of uh, the self image and the selfie is now in every small town, in every small village. And I just worry about what it's doing to self confidence. And I, I, I wonder if you could use your own journey to shine a light on what you don't want other young girls to go through. Mm, I mean, like I said, there was a period, you know, when I was in school where I did, you know, want to be like the other girls and I didn't really look like them, especially, you know, when you're going through that phase of growing up during puberty, you know, girls grow up at different ages, you know, your body changes at different ages, not everyone's going to look the same. And yeah, there were definitely times when I felt that, you know, I'm not growing up as fast as them or, you know, yeah, I don't... So you were in a boarding school with mainly Caucasian girls? You yeah. Were Indian, so that I was... was... That's true. I was in a boarding school with, um, you know, in, in England. So there weren't many girls who looked like me either. There were a lot of them were British, European. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's also when I realized that, um, you know, I was, I looked different to them and, you know, their, their body, the way that they look is completely different to how we as Indian women look, whether it's our skin, our hair. Um, and I think that was probably when I started accepting myself a bit more, appreciating it a bit more because I, I did look different to them and I was, um, even the way that I talked was different, you know, the, the kind of culture that I came from was different. And I think it's when you're thrown into a room with people who are completely different to you is when you start realizing things about yourself that actually make you very special, that you're, you know, you're special enough to be different to a girl, you know, a room full of girls who don't look like you. And I think that's when, um, I started appreciating it a lot more. Tell me in the, you know, we've got about, I think, uh, 10 minutes left. Tell me, Navya, about the passions uh, that have focused your work in the gender space. We know that, you know, perhaps in a few years from now, you will take over the reins uh, of the family business. And that's on one side. But what particular issues? I know you work in the space of encouraging entrepreneurship with entrepreneurship, but you're also looking very closely uh, at access to health for women, uh, especially when it comes to sexual and reproductive rights and even basic things like sanitary pads today, uh, by the way, are a luxury and are often the single biggest reason that girls stop going to school in many parts of our country. So tell me a little bit about what you're working on right now. So I, like you mentioned, I am working on access to healthcare through Ara Health, which is my startup. Um, and then through Project Naveli, I've been working a lot on trying to eradicate period poverty, which is not simply, um, you know, inaccessibility to sanitary pads, but it's also inaccessibility to information about menstruation, which is also something that I feel um, isn't widely available uh, today. And I think there's a lot more that we can do to have these conversations. Um, and I think, you know, um, also something that I feel would need to change is the way that multinationals advertise on television, because for the longest time, you were still seeing blue liquid being used on sanitary yeah. pad commercial instead of red. So I think, um, you know, my job uh, through what I do is trying to make these conversations, um, you know, more regular in society, more regular, you know, in places that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have these conversations, uh, because I think that's when it will be normalized. And um, I think, no, go ahead. No. No, no, I was just going to say it's not just the blue liquid. When you go to buy a packet of sanitary pads from the chemist, he will invariably, at least in Delhi, put it in a black, opaque plastic packet so that nobody can see what's in it. So it's 
always hidden. And then you quite literally, if you need a pad and you run out, you have to say, hey, do you have a pad? And then you wrap it and cloak it in a paper and you hide it and you go to the loo, even in workspaces, even among completely enlightened women. Absolutely. And I think that is something that needs to change. And um, that's also why I think using a platform like Instagram and social media is important because when you normalize these conversations on something like Instagram, it becomes more of an everyday uh, kind of experience that you see and it no longer becomes something that you need to talk about, you know, behind closed doors. So that's also why a lot of the work that I do, I try to put it out on social media because I think the more that we come across it, the more that we see it, uh, the more open we will become to having those conversations. Um, and, you know, the other work that, like you mentioned, is focused around, you know, encouraging women to be entrepreneurs. And that mm. uh, you know, thought came from a conversation I had with my nani, uh, where she told me that women are born entrepreneurs. And I was confused about what that meant until she explained to me that running a home is the equivalent to running a business and women do that every single day whether it's um, you know managing the accounts of a house uh, managing the family is almost the same as managing a team uh, you know going out there and um, you know negotiating on the right price for subsidies these are things that women are used to doing and have been doing for years um, so you know the work that I do around that is just telling women that these are skills that we have innate in us, and um, you know how we can bring that out, helping them you know bring that out in you know in a business perspective and helping them set up businesses. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of things that I'm currently working on yeah. that I hope to complete your sentence. No, I was gonna say I hope to keep taking on a lot more issues because you know these are just. Of, this is just scratching the surface to be honest and there's so much more that you know we need to work on and i hope that i can you know continue working on and, all of these things and, and i can hear your mother saying am no, no, i hearing no, I what just, you're going to say next i know i was saying that if you if you if you in the family if your son comes to you and says look i have an idea and can you give me money no one thinks twice but they don't really do that with their daughters. And I think that should also, I mean, you know, you have to start doing that as well. They may have better ideas. They may have viable ideas. Yeah. It's important to do I mean, that. there's also a there's thing. Women yeah. have to stop being ashamed of their bodies. You know, I, I, yeah. I also it, it ties up with the self-esteem issue on Instagram. We have to stop being ashamed of our bodies and, and things that happen to our bodies. I mean, I'm in my mid age and you're going through a lot of change, Barkha. I'm sure you also feel that. And Absolutely. a lot of women are so, so scared of what, you know, you know, they just set us aside. Now you're in your 40s, you're in your 50s. You know, you're not reproducing anymore. So you don't count for anything. And that's also, it's a huge, a lot of women have issues, mental health issues associated to that. And that is also something that needs to be addressed. Because, you know, you're more than just what your body's, can do you have a mind you have you have ideas you have a strong heart these are things that are never looked at need to be okay <laughs> uh, no absolutely i mean i'm so glad you made this point shweta because i think this notion of middle age in women it's particularly cruel when it comes to women because there's this sense that men you know into their 70s can have a good life but women as they hit their late 40s and 50s or oh, life is all but over for them and a lot of women are terrified uh, as you said of that, I, I, I want to there's ask no, both of you. Sorry, there's go no, ahead. There's no information for women, you know, going through menopause or midlife about anything. And there's so much happening to them. It's uh, it's as bad as, uh, you know, young girls and menstruation. There's no yeah. information available, which is so sad. Yeah, you don't know whether, you know, your, your, your flashes, your changes in body temperature, your inability to sleep, you're putting on weight, um, your levels of libido, anything, everything. It, and, and none of us know. And you don't know what you're supposed to do with it. Exactly. Navya, next project. Navya, next project. Yes, not just your age, our age too. Yes. Okay, here's the question for you in the end. What does, you know, I was once in a room of filled with thousands of people from all across the world. And I was really tired of this, are you a feminist? Yes, I'm a feminist, but. And I just sort of said, for me, it's not complicated. I don't feel the need to add a but because feminism just means a sort of an equal space to dream and to pursue our dreams. And, you know, 
And I said, if you agree with that, please stand up. And I was relieved that everybody stood up. But even today, when you ask somebody, are you a feminist? There's a kind of but attached to it. So I'm not going to ask you, are you a feminist? I'm just going to say, what does feminism mean to both of you? And I'll start with you, Nabia. Um, that's difficult to answer. But I think for me, um, it doesn't just mean, um, you know, like you said, a space to um, pursue our dreams. Of course, that that is the definition of what it means. But I think it also, I hope, should mean that, you know, we come out and support those dreams. It's not just my responsibility alone uh, to have those dreams and support them. But as society, as families, as sisters, or even as brothers and fathers, I think supporting that and encouraging that is also what it would mean for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just before I asked Shweta the same question, I was just reminded of what Madeleine Albright said, that there's a special place in hell reserved for women who don't support other women. Uh, and I'm always reminded of that sentence because I just think it says everything. But Shweta, what, what does feminism mean to you? Feminism means, well, to me, and especially as a woman in a country like India, it means having a voice that's heard. Whether it's a complaint, whether it's a praise, whether it's an idea, whether it's an initiative, I just feel being heard because a lot of us aren't even heard. We're not allowed to touch mm -hmm. computers like the ladies um, who came before us, Meena and Kavita, they're not allowed to touch computers. So it's, it's just being heard and we have hopes and dreams and wishes and hear us out and at least hear us out and then maybe that will lead to helping us out. From yeah, this perch of from this perch of middle age, Shweta, what would you tell your 16-year-old self today? What would I tell? That it... Um, but I mean, you know, like everything, like every age, there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs and you have to learn to make your peace with it. And that's the only way to overcome it. Make your peace with it. You don't have a perfect nose. It doesn't go with the knows everyone else has, make your peace with it. And that's the only way to navigate it. So I think that's it. Middle age, make your peace with it. Um, <laughs> it's about adapt. It's what I learned from my father. I feel the reason he's able to be around and relevant for so many years is that he has the ability to adapt with change. He understands every decade, every generation, and he relates to them as he would if he were one himself, when he's talking to, you know, my kids, he's their age, he understands. When he's talking to my brother's daughter, who's much younger, he's her age, he understands. You have to adapt, don't resist, adapt. Don't resist, adapt. Navya, do you agree with that or do you always want to resist? No, I agree with that. I think the only way we can move forward is if we adapt and if we allow for change to happen. So I agree with her. Well, thank you both of you. This has been an absolutely wonderful conversation. I don't know where the 60 minutes went by. It's been, it's been so interesting. We've spoken about so many different things. But of course, feminism is also a lifelong project, as we know. And we're constantly battling and redefining and readapting and questioning ourselves and always being aware, as both of you have uh, so graciously accepted, of our own privilege compared to so many millions of women around us who are actually just fighting for survival fighting for the right to study, fighting for the right to go to school, fighting for the right to not be married, uh, at least before 18 or now, as the new law says, 21. Thank you, Shweta, Navya, and we hope to uh, follow Navya's projects very closely and wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> that was a new listen, mother-daughter in new listen. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.